Marion, you are definitely a trailblazer, a role model to so many here in Detroit and abroad. I think that we should talk about your journey and how you got started. So many of us look to you as that role model, but I would like to know, and maybe our audience would like to know how you were introduced to music. Well, um, that's a, that's an, uh, that's a great question. Well, one of, one of the things I like to always say is that um, parents must play music for their children. And I was really, really very, um, very fortunate that my parents were both music lovers. My dad was actually a kind of a closeted piano player. He was actually really, really good, but he didn't really want want folks to know. But every once in a while, he'd sit down and play the blues, and it was just just fabulous. My parents were uh, Herbert Hayden and Marion uh, Ford Hayden, and later Thomas, because after my dad passed, my mom got remarried. But they were both just really big lovers of music. So my dad was a huge jazz lover. He had all kinds of jazz records to listen, that he listened to and that I accessed. Uh, they were just in the sphere of our house all the time. Just, you know, just Miles Davis and Oscar Peterson just floating through the airwaves. And my mother was more of a lover of, um, more of a classic American songbook. So I remember that she had a, a record of uh, Gershwin's music and she used to play Gershwin around the house all the time. And so there was always just a lot of music to be absorbed uh, for, for, uh, for, uh, for me as a young person. And so by the time I uh, finally got to be the age of eight or nine, when I was in my, my little elementary school, and they asked me if I wanted to play an instrument, uh, and cello was a possibility because I was kind of a tall girl and I, I didn't couldn't see myself playing a little violin, love those, but I needed something bigger. And as uh, soon as I got that cello, I was I was back at the house actually trying to play some jazz on the cello. And then finally, when I figured out that it was going to be a little hard to do and I got a bass, because actually I wanted a bass first, but they didn't have any small basses. But when I got big enough to play bass, which was about 12, then I just took my bass to the basement and started playing along with records because the those that was the music that was in my ear and i just loved it so much so that's that's really how i got started during that time we have really good public school music education that i mean which i think we still have really great detroit public school music education it's just that we don't fund it as well but during those times it was funded really well we have excellent detroit public school music teachers i loved my music teachers they were awesome they just gave us so many really great opportunities. They were so passionate about what they did. And the ones that I know now that are in school are still very, very passionate. They just need to be supported better. We also know that Detroit has a rich, deeply steeped and deeply rich jazz culture here. Can you talk about how the jazz culture in Detroit influenced you as a musician? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm always glad to talk about that. Well, you know, especially I'll just say this one in the playing of the playing of my instrument in particular, it's really important to have really good foundational training. And which uh, when I think about it, I think classical classical training is really good for that because you, you're going to get all kinds of really great technical information. You're going to learn how to read. You're going to learn how to you know play up and down properly in the positions to play play correct intonation. Uh, and uh, and just address the the, the bass uh, properly so that you don't have you know poor poor uh, problems with uh, uh, you know bad posture and those kinds of things. But when it gets to jazz, you really do need to be able to hook into the community that plays it. And so, luckily, Detroit has had such such a rich and expansive community of players and so many genres of the music too. I mean, you know, I'm talking, you know, ragtime, New Orleans, you know, early bebop, uh, you know, more uh, hard bop, all the all the different more more avant-garde free jazz, just so many different ways, uh, so many different genres of the music and so many different ways that people play. You definitely are a part of Detroit's jazz foundation. One of those things being 
the all-female jazz ensemble Straight Ahead, which you are co-founder of. Can you talk about forming Straight Ahead and what that meant to women in jazz music at that time and what it means for women today, how that has impacted women today? Well, I'm glad. I'm always glad to uh, talk about my uh, my sisters and the great the great group uh, Straight Ahead. For so many people, they had not really seen women really out there playing um, instruments. Occasionally, you would see. You know, you might if you go to church, you may see some women as pianists, um, perhaps some concert pianists, but very rarely did you see them as in jazz as as much as we would like. They, they they weren't rare, but they were. You just didn't see them as much. And in terms of women being playing things like drums and bass, rarely you just did not see it. People would come up to me and said, "I bring my I brought my daughter because I really think that she has to she has to see um, what she has to see what uh, what women can do. That a little girl can do whatever whatever she wants to. And so that that really made us feel really good. And it continues to be so now. People still come up and say, say you know, they of course they bring their sons as well because frankly, um, young men need to see the same thing. They need to they need to continue to see women as colleagues." Uh, across the board colleagues in this uh, in this business. I know that you value music education and, and passing on your wisdom and knowledge to others. Can you talk about what the future of jazz in Detroit looks like to you? Mm. I think the future of jazz in Detroit is really looking completely rosy, so great. Um, I know I'll just I'll just say this that a lot of the nuts and bolts of jazz education has uh, gone from the community where it was when I first learned into the academic institutions and uh, it's and there's some really great things that are happening there in terms of in terms of getting giving um, giving a young musicians a good baseline of knowledge and understand getting giving them time to really work on their craft hone their craft uh, technically on their instrument and getting uh, just uh, getting some some really good uh, information about improvisation and then really luckily we have we still have a really active community of musicians that lives here so once they get that information they can take that back out into the community and really engage with each other and with uh, with those of us who are more experienced in uh, in really learning what this music is actually all about. Yeah,